Okay. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Teresa, and hello, everyone, for joining us and for our uh, in Sweet Tooth Inside Sweet Tooth episodes. Um, this is where we talk about some other people who have uh, made Sweet Tooth possible. Today we have Teresa Miller. Hello, Teresa. Hi, Jeff. And just let me add that you've made me possible, at least as a writer, because without my candy fix, I don't think I could write a single word. Well, I, I, I remember that's how we met you, I think, was, was that you, oh, you yeah. came in, you know, after a chapter that you felt satisfied in, you could get a piece of chocolate. And yes, and we're happy to help out in any small way here. And we should say that piece of cho chocolate escalated to four or five pieces of chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> it's become quite a problem, but I love it. And you all really, you know, I, you've said it before, but Sweet Tooth is our happy place. And yeah, it well, really is. Well, thank you. We, we ran some ads uh, in Tulsa People and, and, and one month was Teresa in her happy place and uh, yeah. it turned out well. Yeah. yeah. Well, for those who don't know Teresa Miller, and I can't imagine there's anybody who doesn't in Oklahoma, is, is Teresa's been, uh, uh, she's taught, she's uh, uh, obviously edited things, she's uh, a TV star with Writing Out Loud, and, uh, and she's organized uh, national uh, writers to come in, which I've, we've been to a lot of those, and many, many other things. Right now, she, we have her profile picture up because she's at an undisclosed location. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we are, we are just keeping it uh, right. uh, quiet about that. Or uh, it's either that or we had some technical difficulties. You make the call. Okay. Well, let me just come forward here and say the real technical difficulty is I cut my own bangs. And I'm not <laughs> ready for that to be revealed just yet. I'll go public <laughs> with it later, but that's the technical difficulty. So, well, we look forward to that. Okay. In your, okay. It's when, a story. It's happened to a lot of people during the pandemic and, you know, more needs to be said about it, really. <laughs> I think bringing it out into the light is, is, is good yeah. and good yeah, for you. I do too. You need to talk about it. Part of the conversation. <laughs> right, right. Um, okay, so the way you edited this book, Love Can Be, Yes. With Teresa McCune. And we have Louisa it at Sweet Tooth. And, Louisa. And, Louisa, I'm sorry. Uh, McCune. And uh, we have this book at, at Sweet Tooth. And uh, great stories and, and, and uh, little essays from national writers, local writers. I um, mean, Teresa has something in here. So, but what, Teresa, what is it that, uh, you know, you and you and Louisa are, are listed as editors. What, what does that mean? Did you all solicit people? Um, organize, I know you organized everything and edit some, I suppose, but, but what does that mean? Well, what it was, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the Kirk Pat Patrick Foundation, but yes. for those who aren't, they need to be. It's a great Oklahoma foundation based in Oklahoma City that one of its many initiatives is dedicated to animal welfare and to really improving the lives of animals particularly here in Oklahoma, but everywhere. And Louisa uh, McCune is the executive director of Kirkpatrick. Uh -huh. And so she was looking for a project to help get the word out about animals, raise awareness and raise money. So we came together, uh, we've been friends for years and decided to edit a book published by the Kirkpatrick Foundation that would actually address, so Louise is the publisher as well as the editor, but actually address our love for animals and writers have a special bond uh, with animals and it was fun we we reached out to people and it's amazing the level of acceptance we got uh, Joyce Carol Oates was uh, willing to contribute a poem about cats we yes. have we have um, Ursula Le Guin uh, actually wrote one of the last pieces she ever wrote was for Love Can Be um, you know so we had a real real uh, Dean Koontz contributed a piece. So we had all these wonderful writers doing it. And one of the nice things about the book, and I'm so honored that it's on sale down at Sweet Tooth is- Hey, Teresa, we, can I yes. stop you for one second? Yeah. I did not start the recording. So, oh, wow. <laughs> let me That's back up, good. okay. Just, I'm so take sorry. It, take it from the top. Yeah, let me let me introduce you again and then we'll okay. go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wait, no, I did. Oh, my mistake, my bad. We are recording. Okay, okay. never mind. Cool. Can we edit <laughs> out? Parts? 
we when might cut it out, but we might not. We might not just leave it here. Okay, just let it be. I mean, these yeah. are confusing times, Jeff. I'm confused. I really don't know when I'm on now or not. I've watched so much TV. I, everything's just sort of a blur of real and fictional. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 very strange. Well, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, what I, what I was saying is that the basis for the book is it's, it's a fundraising project for animal charities throughout the country and particularly here in Oklahoma and 100% of all proceeds, uh, that's net proceeds from the mm -hmm. book, go to animal charities now in Oklahoma. And for every author who contributed, we let them pick the charity of their choice anywhere in the country. All right. and, the Kirk, and the Kirkpatrick Foundation made a donation to that animal charity in their honor. So it's a book that raises awareness, but it also raises money, particularly in these practical times when organizations like the SPCA and so many other worthy animal organizations, rescue organizations are trying to help animals. And so it's a gift that really keeps on giving, even though that's a cliche, it's the truth in this case. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, it really, really a, a great book. And at our store, uh, Teresa has signed her story uh, that she has in her little essay. And uh, and we were uh, uh, mentioning that this cat, Scout. Yes. Little looks, Scout. Looks a little bit like Mooney. Yes. And you've seen Mooney in some of our other things. And uh, so, yeah, that's very interesting. Yes. And well, it's a yes. It's a, one of those Twilight Zone moments, kind of the, the animal vortex. But yes, there's, a, there's an uncanny resemblance between Mooney and Scout. And the interesting thing about Scout, she came into my life uh, vicariously in that I was down in Tahlequah visiting my dentist down there and I was coming home. And when I got home, I kept hearing this little mewing sound and then it became a full out meowing sound. And so I looked behind a, a old valance in my garage and there was this little cat trembling covered with motor oil. She <laughs> had hopped a ride on my car from Tahlequah and had been Hi. shivering there. And she was just so vulnerable. She was about six weeks old. And so she uh, came to live with me. And it's, uh, you know, our our journey continues. Yes, and we don't recommend that for you cats that are trying to find homes, but it, it no, did work no, in this case. No, but it, I tell you, it really did work big time. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Hey, did, Teresa, did you bring anything to read for us? Well, I did. I'm going to read part of the essay I wrote oh, okay. for for uh, Love Can Be. And the book contains poems. It contains short stories. It contains essays. It contains all kinds of things and some wonderful graphics. And one of my favorite parts, Jeff, and you showed my photo with Scout, but photos of the authors with their uh -huh. pets. It's really fun to see, for example, Essie Hinton's a horse lover and she's pictured with her horses. So I, I love that aspect uh, of the book. It's just fun. It makes it more personal. But this essay, uh, my mother died when I was a, a little girl mm -hmm. and I inherited her dog, Tuffy. It was a dog that she had rescued. She'd found it on campus. And he was shortly after her death, he was hit by a car and he lost an eye. And so he was known throughout my hometown of Tahlequah as the one-eyed dog. So I wrote an essay called The One-Eyed Dog, which is related very much to the loss of my mother and how this dog, Tuffy, this one-eyed dog, actually gave me the vision to understand her role in my life better and to uh, make it possible for me to feel empathy with the world that I might not have felt otherwise. Mm. And so I'll, I'll just read the first few paragraphs of it. Okay, that'd be great. A friend of mine asked, why write about Tuffy? It's not as if he pulled a fake lassie and saved you from an abandoned well, an old mine shaft, or some other dark hole, except he did. In spite of our loss, I was normal enough to have wanted a doll or even a cowgirl hat. But my grandmother had bought me a cedar trunk so we could keep my mother's memory alive, sort of. For just to be clear, this was no ordinary hope chest filled with delicate linen set aside for happier days. Instead, it was overflowing with old report cards, diplomas, and autograph books, some with giddy inscriptions about how bright the future would be. There was also the rusty harmonica and grandma's attached note. Your mother worked after school to buy what she called a French harp 
but she'd never gotten around to actually playing it before she smelled the cedar, and then we were rummaging through what might have been. My mother had died after giving birth to my brother, and Grandma had kept her bright red maternity jacket, too. I still have it, along with Grandma's, Grandma's full-out missive, trying to make sense of it all before settling on this. God loved her so much, he called her home. No, <laughs> that's Roxy. That's Roxy, and she's jealous that I wrote about Tuffy instead of her, and that's just going to ha happen. Roxy, Roxy, we're reading. You'll get your day. Now, not that it matters, but maybe it does. She'd written it on letterhead for my grandfather's furniture store and folded it into a Bible. Did I mention I was only two when mother died and that this trunk didn't come along until later after I was able to kneel before it all on my own? Still, it's where my memories begin with those secret drawers at grandma's house. And oh yes, some dime store jewelry already starting to fade. Think plastic turquoise, priceless, Grandma said. I understand better now. The trunk became her strong box of grief. It was just different for me, especially after I found a baby book alongside the funeral roster. Her mother had overcome her own frailties to record my last words, a mantra really for living without her. Our family names, Moon, Splash, and Tuffy. And I'll, I'll close it there. Sorry that for is, Roxy's interruption, but she that's okay. That was kind of timely. Um, yeah, thank you. That's I like I love that 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 essay. I mean, it's 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 very very uh, touching. I think. Um, you know, I, I have to, one last thing. I I have to tell you, I uh, several years ago, it was at night. I know, and I was coming back from from somewhere, and I'm listening to uh, uh, public radio, and you had an interview with. Uh, Rich Fisher, mm -hmm. where I think you were talking about, you know, you're, you're going to school and you were going to be an actress and, yes. uh, and, and that whole thing. And, and Teresa, I have to tell you, I don't think I ever told you this. I actually had to pull over because I, it was so hilarious that I just could not continue <laughs> wow. concentrating on driving. You know? Yeah. But that was a very, very funny interview. And uh, maybe yeah. we'll find it sometime and uh, we'll post it or something. But yes, that was very, very good. It, and and we're glad you didn't turn out to be a professional actress because we would have missed well, all these other things. It wasn't my choice. <laughs> <laughs> there were numerous people involved in that decision who told me really, I, you know, when I was at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, only I was only there for a few days. They asked me if I had ever considered any other profession beyond acting, and I said writing. And they said, "Oh, you must must become a writer." So that was uh, when that decision was made. That is that is funny. Well, Teresa, thank you so much for uh, uh, joining us today, and uh, uh, we look we look forward to uh, to see seeing you with your full bangs. Yeah. <laughs> I, I look forward to that too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and Roxy, say hello to Roxy. And uh, I will. I will. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and we'll be talking to you soon. Thank you, Jeff. And happy holidays. All right. Same to you. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye.